B&B owner Lucy McKenzie appreciates what the girls are doing and how they're doing it. Rebecca and Emma, what strikes you about them? Well, they look They look so young, <laughs> but they've made this fantastic restaurant. Mm. It's been such a success. And they work so hard. Mm. They even get up at the crack of dawn to bake their own bread, as well as the cakes, mm. as well as doing all the cooking. Oh, fantastic. The thing that binds all these fabulous ingredients together is not even food miles. It's not even food yards. They've just come straight from the sea into the kitchen, onto the plate. Food doesn't get any purer, more fully flavoured than this. This is seafood absolutely at its peak. So, from the splendid isolation on the west coast, your next local food hero is on the east coast in Angus, the home of Scotland's most famous beef, and what better place for a butcher to be? Neil Watt worked at some of the best restaurants in London and rose to become head of fresh meat at the Savoy and also a sous chef there. And now he's come back to Montrose, the town where he was born, to keep great family traditions going. Matthew, how are you? Pleased to meet you. Very good to meet you. Well, I must say, you know, chairs, meat, what's this, a social centre? On retiring from the rat race and moving back to Montrose, Neil just couldn't resist getting back to work. When I left, there was 13 butchers in Montrose. My father had a business, and when I came back, there was only one left, and this, this shop had just closed. And I hadn't done anything for about seven or eight weeks, and I took, I took the plunge. What is the magic of, of what the butcher? The magic is good quality meat, That's pure and simple, and service and civility. And all we try to do is be good old-fashioned butchers. We're, we're, we're not doing anything different. I know the vast majority of the people by name, they were either um, customers and fathers or their, their sons or daughters of customers so and fathers. So they're third generation customers. Thanks very much, thank you. All the meat's local. I mean, Glenbervie, Aberdeen Angus is world renowned. I mean, the, at Glenbervie Estate and also just outside Montrose, two miles down the road, they also have a herd there. John Lahore, who manages the Angus herd on the Glenbrevy estate, has the utmost respect for Neil, and they go back a long, long way. Sure, I've known Neil since we were at school together. We used to play rugby. And then when he came back to Montrose, he decided to open up a butcher shop. Neil's about the only one that's a specialised butcher that knows and appreciates the quality of meat that he's getting. With all this talk of hard work, it's time to take the weight of our feet, something that Neil doesn't do very often. I've had uh, six days off in five and a half years. Don't you want to have holiday? What would happen here? What would the customers do? Well, what happens if you were run over by a number 15 bus? Somehow well, 15 uh, doesn't go through here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here is a place that it really is flourishing in spite of competition from the supermarkets. All the meat comes from the countryside roundabout. This place really is the heart of the community. The last local food hero in Scotland is only 20 minutes from the centre of Aberdeen. In 2004, Craig Wilson bought the village pub here in Udney and set about transforming it into a restaurant the locals could be proud of. He's obviously succeeded because some of you voted him as your local food hero in Scotland. The pub was languishing in the doldrums, but as soon as Craig arrived, he made a difference to the whole community. Somebody described it as when I took it over and there was things happening said the fire, the fireplace is back in the village. Yes. Being a proud Scot, Craig is quick to use the very best of local produce. Of course, I would try and use as local as possible. Um, not just the fact it's local, but it's actually the best. So where does the beef come from? Four miles that way uh, is the store and four miles that way, a local um, independent butcher. You could yeah. introduce me to the cow's granny. I could introduce you to the cow's <laughs> granny. How <laughs> cool is that? <laughs> okay, is there anything that you actually get from the village itself? It's spoilt really. I've got two herb gardens, the local castle up the road, half a mile away, and I've also got the walled garden of the local doctor, and he, he's a real foodie anyway. So we've now, a couple of years down the line, got a fantastic supply. And in turn, Dr. David Bell appreciates what Craig has done. The amount of involvement Craig's had with the, with the local community and with charity since he came as well has just been wonderful. We've had two fairs since he came which have, he's created and it's, it's, it's actually re-dynamised the village. Welcome to the first Food and Fun Day 
I'd need green. They have a reputation not only for serving some remarkably good food, but also for doing some remarkably good works as well. I had a party and I said, this year I'm going to raise £10,000 for breast cancer. And uh, to date, um, I think we're somewhere about 36 or 37,000 pounds. That's fantastic <laughs> achievement. Those are the three local food heroes for here in Scotland. And I've enjoyed every single one of them because they've all got great things to offer. But now it's time for the judges to decide. Some really worthy finalists there. Yeah, there really are. There you go. We'll be finding out who amongst those three will be our regional winner a bit later on. Yes, and after the break, Edie Manson serves up his version of Edith's favourite dessert, the deep fried chocolate bar. See you soon. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, Scotland, land of Loch Ness monsters, kilts, and caber tossers, it's also home to some very recognisable brands, such as Iron Brew. Iron Brew. Now, it's launched in 1901. Did you know it contains 30 flavours? Okay. It's a recipe own, known only by two men who can no longer travel on the same plane. In case, so in, case so they, in case they both went down. That's Isn't incredible. That amazing? I think that's a great fact. Obviously this, tablets here. Yeah, it's like fudge. Yes. Seriously sugary, I love this. Very, very sugary. Mm. Okay, that's for, obviously from Scotland. And over here, Tunnock's tea cakes. Mm. From, uh, from 1890. Have you ever frozen those? No, why? What the marshmallow happens? gets all chewy. Really? Mm. Ooh, a little recipe tip. Yeah. We find that in one of your books. <laughs> Coming soon. So watch this face. <laughs> Earlier, we met the three regional heroes from Scotland you voted for as the Market Kitchen local food hero. Mm -hmm. Let's see what our judges thought. Market Kitchen's local food hero 2009 will be determined by our panel of expert judges, all of whom champion and support British producers and local produce. The panel includes food writer and broadcaster Allegra McEvity, food editor and critic William Sitwell, Michelin starred chef Michael Keynes, restaurateur Thomasina Myers, and leading the judges is award winning chef and ambassador for British food, Brian Turner. Today we are celebrating Scotland, so here's a reminder of this year's three finalists and what the judges thought of them. First, two girls who are running a seafood restaurant on the idyllic island of Ulva. I think it's amazing that they've created this uh, wonderful destination place for seafood that's great for the locals and for the tourist industries. 
We knew that we could get really good fresh produce. Yeah, I mean there's so much of it here and no one was using it. Wasn't this was it traceability? And you knew food it. miles. And it's just, and it's just <laughs> out there, isn't it? <laughs> Next, a man who's reinvigorated a village restaurant, raising thousands for charity in the process. What a fabulous fella Craig was at Eat on the Green, raised lots of money, obviously loved that area, a Scotsman through and through, a real hero. Of course, I would try and use as local as possible. Um, not just the fact it's local, but it's actually the best. And lastly, a shopkeeping family butchery traditions alive in Montrose. Neil Watt is a hard-working man who loves his craft and he's come back from London and taken all that knowledge to a small village in Scotland and is resurrecting the butchery trade. A real hero in my book. The magic's good quality meat. Now, pure and simple and service and civility. After watching the films, reading all the applications and quizzing me since I visited each finalist, the judges deliberate long and hard on who should be the Market Kitchen Local Food Hero 2009 for Scotland. And now it's up to head judge Brian Turner to reveal the winner. I made that decision. The winner, Local Food Heroes 2009 for Scotland, is the boathouse at Ulver Ferry. Congratulations. We'll be seeing all the winners again on the 11th of December when Brian Turner will announce the overall winner and this year's Market Kitchen Local Food Hero 2009. Now, the deep fried chocolate bar is said to have been invented in a chip shop in Aberdeen in 1995 and since then it's been named the most unhealthy food ever. Um, now, Edith, yep. you. Um, is it fair to say you're partial to a deep fried chocolate bar? I've only ever had one in my life mm. uh, and I was kind of uh, disgusted by the thought of it until I tried it. Oh really? Now I think, I've you never know, tried one. Well I think you should try yeah. one. Mm. I think a lot of people are in the conception that it's in a yeah, it's fish good, batter. Isn't it? It's not in the same type of butter you fry fish in. Oh. It's in a kind of sweet batter. It looks disgusting. Like you do banana fritters and things like that in. Come on, get it down you. Yeah. Oh, oh, horrible. I've done, come on, you've not even chewed oh, yeah. yet. It's horrible, greasy and horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's proper nasty. Yeah? It's not quite as nasty as the deep fried pizza. Exactly. But, <laughs> yeah, that's just wrong. <laughs> no, that is just it's very, wrong. very wrong. Um, now, Edie, you're going to do a slightly more healthy version, aren't you? Well, no, it's not healthy, but hopefully, so definitely a gourmet. It ain't deep fried, mate. Definitely, right. So this what? is going to be gorgeous. I, here's hoping. So, just you hoping. are going to make your own very much. Aye, deluxe basically, version. Basically, I took, I took a chocolate bar, broke down all the ingredients in it, and tried to compose a quite a a complex sweet out of it. So, so what's in it? Right, so we've got uh, we've got chocolate brownie, we've got eggs, butter, star anise, walnuts, chocolate, sugar, mm -hmm. flour, cream, oranges, glucose, Ooh, cinnamon, all my hundreds of stuff, right? So Favourite. what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is start with the caramel sauce. Okay. So we've got some sugar on there and a cinnamon stick and we're going to turn that into a caramel. Okay. Do you want me to do the standard, sir? Aye, please. Okay. And what to do? Rachel, I'm going to add in some of that cream in a minute. Okay, once it all caramelises. Yeah. What we've got here is some water. We're going to add some glucose to that. Yeah. This is going to make the chocolate mousse. Now, I must stress that you don't have to use all of this to make a sweet, okay? You can use a couple of these components and you'll get a really nice like sweet. Like ready-made component. Yeah. I'm going to bring that to the boil and we're yeah. going to add some chocolate and gelatin to it to set. We're going to fold through some whipped cream. Okay. okay. So this is great fun, making chocolate. your own deep fried chocolate bar. Well, that's that's what we're hoping to the do The toffee, here. chocolate and nougat type of chocolate bar. I definitely not giving myself a, an easy job. So, melt the chocolate oh, okay, so that's going the water and the glucose. Yep, so we've got that going there like that. And then all we've got here, it's got the chocolate. Once it's all melted, we're going to fold it through some, whip, some whipped cream to make the mousse. Yeah, now, ideally, yeah. you let it cool down a little bit, but we'll just get our... As we say in the kitchen, get a finger out here and get on with it. <laughs> yeah. right. So I'm going to add some cream into that. Okay. Now that makes the most divine kind of caramel sauce. So we're just going to let that cook away there on a low okay. heat. I'll turn that down. I can take that out. And we'll just let that cook away there. We've got the chocolate mousse here. And so we've got the chocolate melted, the gelatin, the water, the glucose, and we fold that through. And we put that in the fridge to set, and that's what we've got. Right? <laughs> you can <So> tell <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Okay. okay. Next, Next of all, you take a wee breath, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, and we're going to do some candied orange for the deep fried element of this, okay? Oh. So I've taken some orange peel, 